Yo, what is going on, my YouTube people? 29 United back here with another video. In today's video, as the series is going on, we're going to be previewing, predicting, and talking about Group E and Group F of the 2022 FIFA World Cup. Obviously, I did a full prediction for all the groups. Uh, I did a preview for the group A, B, C, and D. Those videos will be up in the video somewhere, so you guys can go check them out if you haven't already. But in today's video, as I said, we're going to be talking about group, group F. We're going to be previewing, predicting, and talking about, obviously, the teams uh, more on an individual level. So without further ado, let's get started. So in group E, we have gotten Spain, uh, either uh, New Zealand or Costa Rica, Germany, and Japan. Very interesting group. To some, it's the group of death. It's quite self-explanatory. I think it's going to be between Spain and Germany, first or second. And then it's going to be Japan third. And then it's going to be the OFC or CONCACAF team, which consists of either Costa Rica or New Zealand. I've stated previously that I really, really want New Zealand to make it. I think they haven't made a World Cup since 2010, or just a, a team from Ocean in general hasn't made the World Cup since 2010. So I think it'd be a little uh, breath of fresh air. F New Zealand joins the World Cup. But even if they do join it, I think they'll be last. So let's talk about the playoff teams first. So for New Zealand, I mean, like I said, I haven't really watched any of Oshina football. There's no way for me to even watch Oshina football if I wanted to, to be completely honest. But the player to watch for me, I guess it would be Chris Wood, uh, the striker that plays in the Prem. Other than that, I don't really have anything else to say, so I'm sorry if you guys expected me to say a lot on the New Zealand national team. I do not know much about them. Obviously, I know that they're pretty much the main force in oceanic football, but uh, I think um, I would definitely like to see them in this group for sure. And they would put on a hell of a fight. You know, obviously, just going to be the biggest underdogs in the group. But ultimately, I don't think that's going to be enough. For Costa Rica, they've had a pretty underwhelming CONCACAF qualifying run. To be honest, they've, they've been very poor for their standards. And uh, it's just not the Costa Rica that we've seen in the past. The player to watch in that, I guess it would be the main players, Navas, Brian Ruiz. Those players are really the players that people are going to look at when coming to this group. As for Spain... Uh, a Spain that really since since the I would say since 2010 in the World Cup have not been that great. In 2014 they were not great. In 2018 they were all right. They barely made it out the group stage, and then they lost they lost to Russia. The player to watch for me, in my opinion, would be probably Pedri. He had a very good Euro campaign. I would love to see him play in the World Cup and see what he's going to do. And Spain are definitely one of the contenders, I'd say. This is, for me, in my opinion, not the same Spain that we've seen in 2018 and in 2014. I think there's going to be a better Spain team, a better Spanish team. And quite frankly with you, they might have what it takes to go at the top. And for Germany, again, very... Similar to Spain, they do not represent the 2018 team that they were at all. They were they had a disastrous 2018 campaign. We all know what happened. The loss to Korea, they were just not good whatsoever. But this team is a new generation of German footballers. They've got the likes of Kai Havertz, Florian Wurz, Jamal Mus. Yeah, I think Germany's going to be first. Spain is going to be second. If not, it's going to be one of the two. And then uh, Japan third. We haven't talked about Japan. Japan, who, as someone who watches Asian football quite regularly, I would also say, despite them making it to the World Cup, in my opinion, I think they've had a pretty poor qualifying round. Uh, I know they had the toughest of the two groups, but they've lost to teams like Oman, which, no disrespect, is not a team that Japan should be losing to. And they know it. From what I've heard from their fans, uh, the, the, the head coach is not really always choosing the best players from the national team, which is kind of weird from the likes of uh, Kamada not even being in the, in the national team. That's going to be for Group E. We're going to move on to Group F, Canada's group, alongside Belgium, Morocco, and Croatia. And right off the bat, I've seen a lot of people write off Morocco. It's crazy. I think people have just forgotten who Morocco has. We're going to get on to them later on. I still think Belgium is going to finish first. I think Belgium's golden generation is kind of done. I don't think they're going to do as well as what people think they will do. I think they're still going to have what it takes to be first. I'm backing Morocco to be second here. Why? Because in the first video I ever made, I didn't back them. But now that I think about it, I think they will do a lot better than what people are saying that they will. 
that was a lot of words. I think people are forgetting that Morocco, despite not having some of their star players like Hakim Ziyech and Mazraoui, they are doing fantastic. If if those two players, which I don't know if they will, but if those two players that I just mentioned are able to join Morocco in the World Cup, then I think Morocco is going to be a team to watch for sure. As for Canada, I'm very happy that they're there. Uh, as a Canadian myself, I'm very, very happy. For Canada, however, I think this is a very tough group. I don't think they're going to make it out of this group. The player to watch for Canada, obviously, is Alfonso Davies. But a lot of pe- people uh, don't really know Canadian players other than him and maybe Jonathan David. There's a player that I want you guys to watch, and that's Tejon Buchanan, who plays for Bruges in the uh, Belgian Pro League. So that's for that. But maybe Canada can shock us. Maybe they can put out a good fight against these teams. For Morocco, like I said, the player to watch, uh, if they don't have those two star players that I mentioned, it's going to be at Hashraf Hakimi. For Belgium, I don't really know. Kevin De Bruyne, probably. And for Croatia, I haven't watched much of Croatia. I have no idea what they're up to in a national level. But I'm still expecting them, with the experience that they have, to be either third or second. So that's going to be the end of this little preview slash prediction video. Let me know down in the comment section uh, what you guys think about uh, these two groups. Who do you think is going to advance? If there's any players that you guys are going to personally be watching from any of these countries that are mentioned. And if you guys are new to this channel, please make sure to smash that subscribe button. Very close to 2,000 subscribers. Like the video. Join all my socials. Go follow that. TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. All the links in the description. Until then, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one.